at this point, I keep on reacting to Saw Man's content. At some point, he has to copyright strike me because, goddamn, I just keep on watching his videos on stream. He keeps on making <laughs> decent shit, though. So I can't be mad at him. Hey, if he wants the revenue, he can have all of it. Because there is no revenue. <laughs> I'll give him 10 times the amount of revenue that, that the second channel generates. Because 10 times zero is still zero. <laughs> but yeah, his videos are fucking fantastic. I, I severely doubt that... Um, give, it, give him a year or two. I don't see Sawman not being somewhere in the 100,000 subscriber range. But okay, okay, let me, let me, let me start watching. Deliverance is a story. Uh, okay, I want to watch this as well. Um, not only because you said so, Yogi, but because I keep on hearing about Kingdom Come Deliverance and I figured at some point I might play it. It might be off stream, but I do want to play it. Kingdom Come Deliverance is a story-driven open-world RPG developed by Warhorse Studios. Game. It was released back in 2018 and is set in 1403 in medieval Hungary. In other words, no dragons, no wizards, just pure, wholesome Christian fun. Kind of oh boy. Wholesome Christian fun. In Slavland? In the Middle Ages? <laughs> this is... I can't say the things that are on my mind. Although, I, I, I'll, I'll be off Twitch before my speedrun ban. Way before that. Kind of. Oh, 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 that, that, that is. I promise you, that's not how you, you choke someone. Unless they're, they, they've got the weakest respiratory system in the world. That's not going to work. All that guy's going to do is lick your fingers and be like, oh, daddy, you should have woken me up first. Yeah, that's not how you kill someone. Um, what you're supposed to do, I believe customary in, in, um, you know, ancient times is to always um first oil check a person so it's it's one in the stink and then in the mouth afterwards that'll kill them because of the dysentery they won't die instantly it'll take a week but uh, they'll get to it dark very quick oh god is he dead I'm dying help me i think i just killed him would it be funny if i took his pants <laughs> like imagine if i left him naked he just got pranked bro <laughs> What a great prank. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. <laughs> you got pranked, bro. That's so, so funny. I pranked him. It, it, it's just a prank. It's fine. Fine. He's not dead. Upon release, oh, yeah, received mixed reviews. Some people were very impressed with the immersion and the storytelling, whilst others felt like it was a bit clunky and a bit too difficult. But since then, it's had a few. Well, he seems nice. Um, so is this going to be like one of those games where it, it launched in like a suspicious state and then the real game, the game that was supposed to be launched, like every modern title, um, appears like five years down the line when it was supposed like, and that's what it should have released like in a full state. Is, that, is this what Kingdom Come Deliverance is? Is this why I'm hearing about it now? Is the, Maybe this is why it keeps on popping, popping up. Because it's finally like it's in a, a playable state versus one that's not. A few patches to help optimize the game and even provide mod support. In its first year, it sold 2 million copies and has been nominated and won numerous awards. But with all that being said, it's 2023 and this is the first time I've properly played this game. Like many of you, you probably noticed this game has been on sale once or twice on Steam. Yep. So being the savvy doggo that I am, I decide to pick myself up a bargain, give this game a play, and hope that I make my money back with the YouTube ad revenue. It's not, yeah, that's, that, that, that's not happening. Um, you see, if, if you wanted to make your revenue back, you would first have to do a face reveal. Um, and then you would have to do a cock reveal. But like what you do is you end the video before you get to the tip of the deck. And you say you'll find the rest of this on OnlyFans. Right. And then you charge people um, $5 to see your OnlyFans. But there's only one video uploaded to the OnlyFans, and it's just Rick Astley. 
just dancing. It's just never going to give you up. Now, this game is kind of ass, but it triggered all the right people to buying it um, as a statement. Aha, so did it do a, a Hogwarts legacy on people? That's nice. My mom gave me that. Please like and subscribe. It really does help me pay for the cost of Kingdom Come Deliverance. Okay, fair. Potentially. So with the intro out of the way, let's jump into Kingdom Come Deliverance and whether it's worth playing in 2023. Okay, let's talk gameplay. This game is designed to make you feel fully immersed within this environment. It kind of, it kind of gives me chivalry vibes. Um, and I really, like for a while, I got really absorbed in playing chivalry. Uh, when it, after it came out, I fucking loved chivalry. And that's, I'm getting the same kind of vibes from this. Though I don't know if its combat system would be as complex. And to do that, they've gone for the bold choice of making it so that you are stuck in a first person camera view. Some people will hate this, other people, like myself, will absolutely love it. Skyrim. That's not to say that the game is constantly like this, there are cinematic shots when you are doing part of the story, or a action sequence. There are also survival elements to this title, you do have to keep yourself well fed, and unfortunately you do have to go to bed. But where this game truly shines is the fact that they really put the roleplay Ah, uh, gamers. We, we do the things in video games that we should be doing for ourselves in real life. You have to go to bed, get well rested, and you have to take care of your health. Just not in real life, in a video game. <laughs> in RPG. Yes, you are locked to one character. His name is Henry, and he's a blacksmith's son. I'll be honest with you, I have a very low attention span when it comes to questing within games. However, this one really captivated me, and for the sake of not ruining the plot for anyone else, that's pretty much all the information I'm going to tell you about our hero, Henry. And this 10 out- That 100% means that we have sex with him later down in the game. Whether that's consensual or not is, um, you know, it, that I, I suppose that's dependent on how realistic they wanted it to be for the time period it was set in. Our 10 story. What you do with Henry is completely up to you. If you want- See, I was right. To be a psychopath going around murdering priests, you could do that. And trust me, I've done that. Sleep. Oh shit. No, 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 wrong button. I push wrong button. Or perhaps right. you fancy yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it just okay. Based on the camera angle, I'm assuming we snapped his neck. But it looked like for a second we were doing something else to that unconscious man. That's more of a Robin Hood sort of character who robs from the rich to give to the poor. You can totally do that too. To give you a further understanding as to how much you can roleplay, there is even an achievement you can unlock for being an alcoholic. Something tells me Henry's nice. going to look more like Phil Mitchell by the end of this playthrough. And that's just the low end of the spectrum. For a Chad player like myself, I decided to play on hardcore difficulty, which meant there was no map markers. I couldn't see myself on the map. I had to navigate by looking at everything around me. I also got two negative perks to start off with, and I thought sleepwalking would be a great one until it actually happened. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. So that, okay, so you get, okay, so the, the, it's like, um... It's kind of like the Sims system where there's certain things you don't control because you got negative perks. So I wonder if any of those negative perks can be used in a positive way. Oh, you motherfucker. This is so stupid. This is actually fucking stupid. But why stop there? Let's remove fast travel and make the enemies more difficult. And what's that? You want to save the game whenever you can? Well, guess what? That's going to cost you. You either have to sleep in it in or take some save snaps or whatever they call it. And I have to say, I'm so happy I chose this setting because it really made me engage with this game. There are choices you'll have to make and each choice has its own consequence. And be warned, if you've ever played Morrowind, it has a very similar setup in terms of 
You can murder any named NPC you want within. I, I kind of like that. I kind of like that, yeah, no one's invincible and no one's, like, you know, safe from you being a retard. I feel like those parts of games are absolutely amazing because you can fuck things up and it's 100% up to you. Um, I do wonder, though, because I was watching one of Sawman's streams and he was playing Sengoku Dynasty. I wonder where he would rate Sengoku Dynasty in comparison to Kingdom Come Deliverance. From what I saw, I think he would probably rate um, Kingdom Come Deliverance as higher than Sengoku Dynasty. I just wonder how much higher. And reason. So you can inadvertently, if you decide to be a bastard, cuck yourself later in the game. Drop, drop. Oh, I don't do anything. Fuck him. Oh! <laughs> That's beautiful. God damn, just curb stomp some motherfucker. Oh, fuck. Oh my god, that was brutal. Oh my god. Oh, look away, Pebbles. You're not meant to see this. Jesus. It's more than likely you'll hear people complain about the combat being too difficult. And quite frankly, I don't agree with that. Although at times this game has the look and feel of an Elder Scrolls title, such as... I don't know if they're complaining about it being too difficult or just being clunky because that that horse fight I don't know if that's a skill issue so much as a game issue because you're swinging wild and you're missing you're, you're missing father Ted here quite a bit Skyrim or even a more He's graphically fucking... enhanced oblivion the combat is more on a level with shivery too it takes skill, there's directional combat, there's feints, there's counters. You even have different weapons to Okay, so I'm not that far off. It is like chivalry. Choose from which work better in different situations. So if you come to this game thinking you're going to 1vx every guard in sight and eventually become the king, you'll be brought back down to reality pretty quickly. And to anyone thinking there'll just be a stealth bow archer like in Skyrim, i got news for you. The bow combat on this Shit. is actually quite difficult, and enemies aren't stupid. Shit, you shoot with a bow and arrow, guess what they're gonna do? Chase you down with a fucking axe and murder you. Ah, fuck me! Okay, maybe maybe I would like this game. Maybe I would like this game. Yeah, this seems this seems pretty good, actually. Um, I like I like complex combat systems that make you think and you can do multiple things with. Um, I, I, I don't know. I like playing games where you have to think laterally as opposed to living out a power fantasy like you do in a game like Skyrim. Um, obviously I'll play both, but I do prefer games where you have to actually think about what you're doing. Like, uh, Bannerlord, for instance. Why? Yes, I found this out several times. I'm sure a lot of you will find this game very appealing just with what's been said so far, but I haven't even got into the character progression yet. There are several skill lines, there are several perks, you even have different love interests you can have, and you get a pet dog. What more could you possibly want? And to anyone wondering, yes, this game is free. Okay, yeah, but we're living in 2023, where Baldur's Gate has released. So the question naturally becomes... Can you romance and fuck the dog? And I don't just mean as a white woman. I mean like as any character. For, for the sake of diversity, of course. And gameplay. That's very important. Rome. You have the ability to explore several different towns, go lurking in the woods for bandits, and even go hunting, fishing, and all your usual RPG side quests. So it might surprise you then when I tell you a lot of players won't even get to experience half these mechanics because so many people quit before it gets good. And it's because of one major flaw in this title. You see, I think that uh, the problem is people are quitting before it gets good because it's bad in the first place, right? If people are quitting before it's good, that means that there's something in the beginning that needs to be changed so that the gameplay is enjoyable enough for them to keep playing. It's, it's generally a big issue with games like this. Um, I, I'm just thinking about it more. I don't actually see that much of a difference between this game and, and Bannerlord. 
I like I said it earlier and now I can't get it out of my head. This seems very similar to Bannerlord, and I wonder if it's made by the same people. So I've actually played this game before, but fell for the same pitfall that most other new players will experience. To best describe the issue with Kingdom Come Deliverance, I'm going to use Breaking Bad as an analogy. So Breaking Bad is known okay. for having an award-winning story and some amazing character development. However, that being said though, it does take a couple of episodes for it to really kick in. The first couple of episodes are pivotal to the plot, so it's not like you can just skip over them. However, a lot of people give up before they get to the good stuff. And this is where- Uh, I don't, I don't know that Breaking Bad has that problem. Um, I think Breaking Bad moves in at, at enough of a good, a good pace that you can get to the good stuff because the first parts of it incite some form of intrigue like oh what's going to happen next right where's this going to go from here um i think if you can't make a good uh, like a game like really really good from the start and it needs setup the setup of the game needs to be intriguing so if you don't have that intriguing setup People are going to assume that there's because there's no intrigue here before because like I have no want to focus on this. I have no want to then get to the stuff that's supposed to be most enjoyable. But yeah, no games should always lean as hard as they can on um, being super enjoyable from the get go. You can always like if you start on a high and go lower. It's better than starting on a low and then trying to get higher, at least in video games, because people just like watching videos, just like movies, their attention span is not that great. Where Kingdom Come Deliverance goes wrong. Essentially, the first hour of gameplay is a tutorial. And even then, it's a very slow moving tutorial with a lot of cutscenes and a lot of story. Don't get me wrong, the tutorial is needed. It also has some vital plot points. But it just takes too long to get to the point and the problem is if you couple this with the fact that it's free roam so you can just wander around aimlessly for hours on end before you actually do the main story quest it makes for a very okay yeah 100 percent if i played this game i would just wander off into the bushes and just never find the main plot point i was supposed to i'd be playing for like a hundred hours plus and still have no fucking clue where the beginning of the quests are very slow paced start but once you are eventually released from the tutorial you're pretty much free to go do whatever you like and you'll know you hit this point because there are credits and you're being carted away as critical as i'm being though the story is probably one of the most immersive stories i've played in quite some time maybe the shit tutorial actually helps with that or maybe it's the fact that your choices actually seem to matter. Or maybe it's the fact that it's a medieval knight game actually based on realism as opposed to Dungeons and Dragons. But none of this will matter if people just simply don't get past the tutorial. And trust me, I know I'm speaking from experience as this is my second time playing this game. Okay, so that's that's the big wall. I wonder if they can even fix that now that the game is fully released. Like because now the question is, do they go back and fix the tutorial and treat it somewhat like a live service game? Or do they just leave it as is? Well, I suppose Kingdom Come Deliverance at this point is... Um, I'm sure it's older than five years. I don't, I don't know when it was released. But I'm pretty sure it's older than five years, so that's probably never going to be fixed. Uh, if it's on Steam... You can update it. Yeah, I think maybe it's best hope then. If that hasn't changed um, in whatever five plus years that it's been out there. I think it's best hope is that there's some guy out there who's going to mod the game and fix the tutorial for them. Now, it's worth noting that this is Warhorse Studios first ever game that they've developed which is pretty spectacular when you think how smoothly this game runs and how well thought out it actually is oh oh dude ilgi 
VR integration would be amazing for a game like this, actually. That would actually be super cool. <laughs> I mean, I would go around being an absolute fucking terrorist. <laughs> but that would be awesome. That's not to say that the game is perfect. There is the odd jankiness here and there. But let's be honest, people forgive Skyrim for fucking a lot worse. So am I going to be bothered about a couple of MP? Yeah, but, yeah, but you don't understand, um, Sawman. Skyrim is the Todd Howard special, right? People will always forgive a Bethesda game for its infinite amount of bugs because they understand that this is Bethesda. Warhorse Studios is not Bethesda. Warhorse Studios doesn't have, like, Todd Howard in a mustache and, like, a funny hat being like, let's release Skyrim, but call it something else. No, so they don't have that to fall back on. Um, it, it's strange to say, but the Bethesda games are kind of like being in an abusive relationship where after a while you just get used to the beatings, and so you just learn to accept them. PC's being stuck? Probably not. There has been many rumors about a Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, and all signs seem to point to the fact that the success of this title means there's likely to be a second one. Although no official trailer has dropped yet, or no official announcement, sadly. But while we wait for the second installment, you'll be happy to know there are several mods you can install in the meantime to add that extra life to this title. My favourite RPG I've ever played is Oblivion. And the reason I loved Oblivion... Sorry, I'm just internally judging him now. Um, yeah, Oblivion's fine to have as your favorite. Yeah, yeah, Oblivion was good. There was a lot of cool and janky shit you could do in Oblivion, but that kind of just added to the experience instead of taking away from it. So one of my my friends um, who um, I, I used to actually... I played Oblivion on a PlayStation and I didn't have Oblivion at the time. And I had no money because I was a child and uh, slave labor. I wasn't sexy enough to get um, pocket money from the, the priest at my school. But I also couldn't go into the slave labor market because, you know, my parents were being unreasonable and told me I needed to finish school. So I was borrowing a friend's disc to play Oblivion on my PlayStation and like he was telling me like all the shit he did and like he was he like gave me an elastic band one day and he was like if you take this elastic band you can leave the game on overnight you wrap the elastic band around the controller around the movement of the controller you crouch and you just walk into a wall and you just leave it on the whole night and when you wake up the next morning you will have maxed out stealth skill and so many levels and you get to play as an overpowered motherfucker. And I was like, Jesus Christ, that's horrifying, but also impressive. And you just need to be sneaking and somewhere around like a rat or something like that. And you could do that in the very beginning of the game. Um, I think my favorite segment of Oblivion was probably uh, Shea, Gorath, uh, Shea Gorath's segment. That shit was cool as fuck. Um, but yeah, now I'm going on a tangent. But yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Oblivion's decent enough that, that it should be your favorite. Yeah. Oblivion so much is because it gave you a lot of freedom and it made you feel like every NPC was potentially important. And I haven't played that game in quite some time. And yet, when I play Kingdom Come Deliverance, it has some sort of warm familiarity to it. And it reminds me of Oblivion so much in that sense of like the freedom that I have and the choices that I make. In the Man, I just gotta say, the graphics in Oblivion, like in my memories, do not look nearly as bad as they do in reality. I got some serious rose-tinted glasses on for that game, but, but still, I hope one day Oblivion and Morrowind are both remade in, at bare minimum, the Skyrim engine. That would be amazing. In the last couple of days, I've racked up 16 hours, which doesn't sound impressive until you realize I have a full-time job and somewhat of a social life. 
Sorry to brag. Not only that. Oh. Motherfucker. I was going to say, okay, yeah, that's fine. I've got a full time job. And then he had to hit me with social life. God damn it. God damn it. He's just flexing now. I noticed that playing the remastered Halo 1, that tab key to swap between old and new graphics blew my mind. You see, I was never into the Halo 1 game, but that's amazing. You see, that's, that's the kind of shit that we need. Like, in any remasters, we need that. We, we also don't need companies like Blizzard remastering Warcraft 3 and turning it into what looks like a fucking mobile game. But yeah, we need actually that, that ability. That needs to be like a, a standard hotkey on remasters, is swapping between classic and new graphics. That would be amazing. That has done the one thing that Great a idea. game hasn't done to me in quite some time, and that is I actually think about it when I'm not playing it. I'm actually daydreaming about playing this game. So if you got to this part of the video and you're still considering whether you should purchase the game or not, let me save you the trouble. Just go and buy it. It's constantly on sale. You can spend three or four quid. You will get more than your money's worth out of this game, and it might become a new favorite. And on that bombshell, I'll end the video there. But if you have enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, by all means, consider subscribing. If you want to see more RPG playthroughs, or even if you want to see me play and review Oblivion, leave 69 likes and I might con Do it. Do it. Review Oblivion. It'll take you forever. Do it. Re review every part of Oblivion. I want a review for the starting area, for Bruma, for escaping the prison in the beginning, for Tiber Septim's left ass cheek, for Tiber Septim's right ass cheek. Uh, do it. You will have infinite content. Reviewing Oblivion. Baldur's Gate sounds like masturbate with my accent. I think about it. <laughs> what the fuck? It's because you got masturbation on the brain. Or bare sex. Consider it. I'll leave some other videos on the screen which you might enjoy. And as always, a big thank you to my patrons and YouTube members. You guys are the best. Video. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye for now. Yeah, good video. Okay. Okay, he's convinced me. Um, I think I will at some point pick up uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance and give it a try. Why not? It sounds good. It's got some interesting things. I really like the combat in Chivalry, and if it's even close to that combat, I'd love to play it. So fuck it. Yeah, why not?